If you're like me, you do a lot of UE4 build cooking, deploying, and general just distribution and server testing. Now, as an engineer working on dedicated servers for a game, I do a lot of server builds. Now, I could push this to Steam and rely on the Steam Pipeworks to auto-update servers remotely and things, but then you have to register a build of Steam, upload that, pull it down, use Steam command line, and that that's it's a good it's a good flow. But what if you want to upload or to deploy the servers locally? So you have a local area connection of multiple servers, and you just want to test on those servers, right? You don't need to go to Steam to do those. You just want a faster way to deploy files. And say you do a quick change, you don't necessarily want to upload to Steam to take advantage of their patching system. You just want to test a build quickly. You also are tired of messing with batch files and configuring batch files to get the builds to where they need to go and things like that. I was tired of all this, so I created something which I'm currently calling the Lazy Ploy Suite. What is the Lazy Ploy Suite? I'll tell you. First, and I think the most important part of it, is a custom standalone Unreal Engine program that you just pop into your engine build. It compiles against Unreal. It is just like any other Unreal Engine program, standalone thing that you just pop into your project. You can build it from source if you'd like, or you can just run it as is. And it'll give you a list of projects that are currently also alongside your engine, or you can browse to any U project file that you would like. And this serves as sort of a, what I call a development front end for UE4. You can launch an arbitrary number of clients. So if I wanted to, for example, if I wanted to load four clients and I wanted to organize these in a grid pattern, uh, currently on this 1920 by 1080 screen, I'll take, uh, what is half of 1920? 19... I should have done this up front. I should I could have done that in my head. Oh well. So the resolution of 960 and 1080 by, by 2 is 540. Now my particular game overrides the console given resolution settings, so that's rather unfortunate. But uh, you'll see what this has an effect of in a second here. So uh, now I'm running on a 4K screen, but my stream window is only 1920 by 1080, so the top left of my screen is actually uh, 1080 pixels down from the top of my screen. All right, now that being said, if I click this button, you'll see that it immediately loads four clients in a perfect grid pattern that fits this window here. One, two, three, four. And you don't have to worry about batch files and getting those numbers right. You just pop in the resolution you want per client and where the top left corner on your screen you want to go and it'll organize the clients in a two by x grid now as you can see my client does kind of change the resolution after it's loaded but uh that's another issue altogether and nothing related to unreal's command line so you can also pass in arguments and post to the listen server so if you want to test multiple clients on a listen server you can just pop the listen flag on uh, pop the join flag, which will tell every client to join the listen server. The listen server will always be your top left, your first client. And I want to run the level five rooms as a map in this build. So I'll go ahead and hit launch clients. And you'll see that the top left client will become the server. And these other three clients will become clients to the server. And they will join that listen server. Do, 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 do. Alright, there you go. The, uh, these are now all clients here. And uh, there's some UI issues here, but uh, again, not an issue with batch Five, script. Four, issue three. with the game itself. Actually, very, very confused as to why the game did not. Game is not updating there. That's a whole new issue that. Unrelated to uh, unrelated to the the project I'm showing, but that was also a, a significant issue, and that, that shouldn't do that. All right, now in any case, uh, other than that disappointing pro problem with generic shooter, you can see that the front end does do its job, and it does set the listen server, and they do join the listen server. And right now it's set between one and four clients, but you can change that. Now. 
You can also, there's, a, there's an easy button for error. You can hit that button, load the error immediately. But uh, I don't really use error too much when dealing with server stuff. What I do use though is I cook a shit ton of servers. I change some server code in C++. I need to rebuild and and deploy. So currently this doesn't have the feature I'm going to introduce later, which is just called exe rebaking, which is it just builds a new exe, injects that into the old build and uploads the old build content with the new exe. That's a kind of advanced thing that we're I'm going to cover later. But uh, for now, this is just the standard Unreal 4 cooker options with some little additions. I can choose to cook Windows, Windows Server, Linux, Linux Server. These are the platforms that I cook for. You can easily add in your own platforms if you desired, but these are the ones that I'm targeting. And so for now, I'll just cook Windows and Win Server. Then uh, I will turn off Use Pack, turn off Compress, turn on Iterate, turn on Strip Version. Why? Because those are the settings I like to do for faster cooking. But again, if you want these settings, they're there. Now I have a custom script I do for fixing server binaries for Steam because uh, epic issues and things. So that's already baked into this. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to strip the debug files. I like to remove all PDB files of my builds for builds I know I don't need debug files for. So that makes the build 500 megs smaller. So I just have an option there, which is not built into UE4. Then uh, I have another option here to, to zip the build which is also not UE4 standard. If you decide that you want to zip the build automatically, you then are given the option to deploy to the build manager or to lazy ploy. And if this is enabled, you give it the, the URL of your lazy ploy server. For me right now, it's just local host, but this does work remotely. And the description of your new build. And I'm gonna call this work in progress video build. So I'm gonna hit start cook. And you'll see that it launches a new cook. And anybody who has access to the Lazy Play web server will immediately see in real time, they don't have to refresh or anything, a new build pop up in the build list. And you get real time updates as to what is happening here. So this is cooking 164, 164 server, which you see over here. As this cooks, as it strips the files, the debug files, it, as it zips, you get real time progress here. And when this is completed, uh, it then magic happens with the third part of this tool. So this lazy ploy web interface and backend, this is all kind of one part. And this server stores every build that you push to it. Eventually it'll store log files, it'll store session info, it'll store profiling info, it'll store a whole lot of things. But uh, right now all it does is store build files for now. Or this is a work in progress video, remember? All right, and now this bottom console prompt, this is the third tool. Now this is a program that you can deploy onto a remote server. You don't need to have anything else installed but this tool. And what this tool does is it's is it spins up a server for you. So it pulls down a build from the build manager based on whatever, uh, based on if you want Windows or Linux or whatever, you give it what build you want. And you give it the URL of the build server and it pulls down the latest build. Now, as you can see, uh, this build here, it built a completed. And down here, you'll see new build found starting up there. So it's shutting down the server and you can now see that the server already downloaded the file, it extracted the build, and uh, you can see Windows security going, hey, new server up, do not do I trust it? Which is uh, proof that, hey, a new server, never been launched before, new build is running. And uh, you'll see that you now have the Unreal 4 new build automatically deployed to your remote UE4 server. As you can see here, here's your UE4 output. And all this output will eventually be forwarded to the build manager as well. And if you push a new build, you can go ahead and it'll automatically update all servers contacting the build manager. Pretty awesome, right? Now, another thing is um, this build list. Uh, you can Again, you can hit all four platforms per build. Uh, if you deploy, if you cook, say, just a, a Windows server, or just a Windows build without a server, it the server watchers know only to look for builds that contain its platform. So if you want to push only a server update, you can push only a server update. If you want to push only a Linux server or only a Windows client, uh, it won't interfere with anything, and the servers are smart enough to know, hey, 8 is the latest build that contains a server. And again, you got archives of all your builds. And for every completed build, under the platforms list here, you can go ahead and choose to download that build for that platform. For say, if I want this client 
for some reason. If I don't have it locally because I'm with someone else, I'm like a tester uh, testing these builds. And you can, you can go to your test room like, hey, can you pull down build 7 and test that thing? They don't have to go and hunt down Perforce or an automated setup or whatever. They just go to this website, go to your build manager website, find build 7, and then just click the Windows icon. Now, you'll see that there's still some sizing and the real-time status updates kind of change the columns a bit. Brian is still doing some work, but if I click uh, 7 here, you'll see that it's going to automatically start the download, and it's done real fast. Uh, that's the advantage of local area network testing is everything's real fast. You don't have to wait for Steam or anything. You just click it, boom, you get it. That's simple. So if this is on a box next to you or a box in the office, you get LAN speeds. You don't have to wait for Steam or anything like that. You get immediate testing right away. So uh, that's that's where Lazy Ploy is currently. And there's a whole lot more features I plan on adding. But if you're checking out this watch work in progress, hopefully it sparks your interest. And... Uh, yeah, let's see what we can do.